Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the CFA subjects and this is going to be a very interesting video wherein I am going to tell you the CFA subjects and give you a brief description of each subject. So you know that what you are going to be studying in each subject. So there are 10 subjects in all levels of CFA. First two levels have the same 10 subjects. Third level also has 10 subjects but some subjects are different as compared to the first two levels. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing those subjects which are applicable in the first two levels. So starting off with eco. Eco needs no description, right? So eco is divided in two types, microeconomics and macroeconomics. You will be having both. So under microeconomics, you will be studying things like monopoly, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, etc. The demand supply. In macroeconomics, you are going to be studying the monetary policy, fiscal policy, the business cycles, the currency exchange rates, etc. And I'll be also telling you whether each subject is theory or practical. Now by theory, I mean that it is going to be practical theory, which is applicable in the day to day lives. So it's going to be such theory that you are going to enjoy studying. So eco is entirely theory except for one chapter, which is the currency, which is practical in nature. Second subject would be cons. Cons is shortcut for quantitative methods. Now you have to understand that there are three styles of analysis in the financial markets. One is called technical analysis. One is called fundamental analysis and the third style is called quantitative analysis. So in cons, you are going to study those techniques which you will be applying to analyze the stocks and then take your buy or sell decisions. So again, it is a very practical subject that you would be studying. The field of quantitative finance is an emerging field and cons would help you to study the topics involved in that field. The third subject is FSA, which stands for Financial Statement Analysis. Now, this is nothing but accounts. Here you are going to study balance sheet, PL, cash flow statements of a company, and everything which goes in a balance sheet, PL, cash flow, and the various ratios that you would be using to analyze a company's financial statements and its future prospects. So, again, a highly practical subject and one of the most important subjects of CFA. The fourth subject is Ethics. Ethics has the highest weightage in all levels of CFA exam and one of the most, in fact, the most important subject of CFA. Now, what are you going to learn in this subject? In ethics, you are going to learn what as a CFA candidate and a CFA professional you are expected to behave, what constitutes violation of the laws, what is right, what is wrong. So just to give you an example, I am preparing a research report and majority of the content in my research report is copied from somewhere and I do not give due credit to the source from where I have copied. Isn't this a violation? Definitely this is a violation. So basically in ethics, you are going to study what is a violation, what is not a violation. And this is one of the most interesting theory subjects that I must have taught. Coming to the fifth subject, it is fixed income. Now, what you will be learning in fixed income? anything and everything related to the bond markets. Now, all of you must have heard of stock markets. Stock market comes under equity. Bond markets is a different field altogether and it's bigger than the stock markets also, which people are not aware of. So in fixed income, you are going to learn the various types of bonds. How are bonds traded? How are they bought? How are they priced? Who is allowed to buy bonds, etc. So this again is a very interesting subject and it is a mixture of practical and theory both. Coming to the sixth subject, it is equity. Equity, your favorite, it is everything related to the stock markets. How are stocks traded? How are stocks valued? On what basis do you analyze a company? What is an index? You must have heard Nifty 50, Sensex, Nasdaq. What is the role of Nifty 50? How to trade in Nifty 50? Basically anything and everything related to share market. Now coming to the seventh subject, it would be corporate issuers. Now, what is a corporate issuer? A corporate issuer is a fancy name for a company. Now in this subject, you are going to be learning what is corporate governance? How are companies expected to behave? How are companies accountable to all the stakeholders, the shareholders, the employees, suppliers, the government, 
etc then what are the various business models that a company follows then how does a company raise capital what are the sources of capital what is the cost involved with raising each source of capital whenever a company undertakes a major project what are the things that it focuses on before undertaking that project whether to take that project or not all these are the things that you would be learning under corporate issuers again a mixture of theory and practical but more skewed towards the practical side then the eighth subject would be alternative investment now what you would be learning under alternative investments now let me ask you a simple question as an individual can you invest in a startup the answer is no can you buy a controlling stake in a company the answer is no can you buy real estate on a day to day basis the answer is no so these are the asset classes where individuals do not have easy access to so such asset classes are called as alternative asset classes let me ask you can you invest in stocks the answer is yes can you invest in bonds the answer is yes can you invest in gold the answer is yes so these asset classes are called as traditional asset classes so in the subject alternative investments we are going to learn all about alternative asset classes who can invest in alternative assets how are they traded what are the complexities involved in alternative asset classes and the alternative asset class is emerging both in india as well as internationally and it is going to be one of the most interesting subjects again a mixture of theory plus practical but more skewed towards the theory side ninth subject would be derivatives now to give you a simple explanation of what you would be learning in derivatives say for example you are an exporter and you receive dollars from your international clients now what is the fear when you receive dollars that the dollar might fall in value so that when you exchange dollars for rupees you would in turn get lesser indian rupees right that's the fear so what do we do to protect ourselves to hedge ourselves against this we enter into derivative contracts so in derivatives you are going to learn all the hedging tools how you can trade derivatives which are the various types of derivative products that you get in the market and last but not the least portfolio management now there's a famous saying by warren buffet don't put all your eggs in one basket what does it mean that as an investor you shouldn't be investing only in one asset class you should diversify your investments so that even if one asset class were to falter your other investments could take care of it so portfolio management teaches you the power of diversification which are the various types of investment products available in the market for you to be able to achieve the diversification goals what are the various types of investors in the market how do you manage risk should you focus only on risk should you focus only on returns or should you focus on risk adjusted returns how to construct your portfolio what to avoid what to choose etc all these are the things you would be learning in portfolio management for you to be able to construct an efficient portfolio so each and every subject that you saw under cfa is highly practical and you would find its application in day to day life each and every word each and every sentence in the book has a meaning attached to it so nothing that you would be learning would go waste and across all three levels of cfa you would be getting an in depth knowledge of finance in fact by studying the first level also you would be getting to know a lot of things in finance so i hope you got a broad idea about what you would be studying in cfa and the subjects involved if you found this video useful please don't forget to share it with a friend Also do not forget to subscribe to our channel because we'll be getting much more important and interesting content about CFA stay tuned for further updates thank you so much for watching the video